I finished the main storyline of Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and I've played over 70 hours so far. So I'm going to share some of the things that I'd wish I had known earlier on in the game so you can have a more enjoyable experience in Pandora. Now, no spoilers in this video, of course, and cheers to Ubisoft for the review code. Now, when it comes to outposts, there's two different types in this game. The first is the big boy outpost surrounded with anti-aircraft missiles that launch when you do approach it from the air. And then we have the smaller outpost facilities with no aerial defenses. Now, when it comes to these smaller RDA outposts, you don't get any extra loot for clearing them whilst you remain undetected compared to the bigger outposts. When you do clear them in a stealthy manner, you will then get a lot of extra loot. So in that regard, I would highly recommend that you just fly into these smaller bases with your Ikran and just mow them down with your machine gun because for some reason, you're almost unkillable when you're actually mounted on your Ikran and you can play really offensively against the ground units and AMPs. They just kind of melt away, which is quite satisfying to be honest with you. You can genuinely clear these outposts in about 30 seconds flat doing this and I wouldn't be surprised if this actually gets patched by the developers in a future update. Now, as for stealthing in the larger outposts, it's important for you to know that you only forfeit this additional loot for being stealthed if reinforcements are called, which means that if you do get discovered by an enemy in the fortress, don't worry because you can still kill them and remain undetected. You just need to ensure an enemy doesn't call reinforcements or the outpost is set to alert at the top of your screen. Because if that does happen, then you will lose your extra loot if you do complete this outpost. And then you'll need to quit to the main menu and then press continue to reset the whole outpost and then try again. Now, to get the best gear or the best armor in the game and reach the max combat strength level of 20, you're going to need to craft this gear from exquisite recipes that you can purchase for free off two vendors, that being Raj in the Clouded Forest Resistance Base and Uniluck, the vendor for the Kamatir Clan in the Clouded Forest. Now, these are the only two to unlock after you progress the story until you finish the After the Fog quest in the Clouded Forest, which basically means that you've completed the Kamatir Clan storyline and the Resistance HQ has spawned on your map to visit, which is around 15 or so hours into the game. And I finished that at level 14, by the way. So it's pretty possible to do without getting yourself quite to a high level. Now, once that's done, you then need to craft the following gear, which I will highlight on your screen right now. And in the interest of your time, I'm not gonna break down each armor piece in this video, but just know that this is the best armor in the game comparatively to gear that is dropped from all outposts. And this will allow you to reach level 20 pretty quickly, but only if you equip four exquisite weapons that are in your weapon wheel alongside your gear. And again, you're going to need to craft these weapons if you want to reach your max strength level because I've completed all the outposts and the only weapon that dropped that was remotely competitive in terms of stats was the Dauntless Heavy Bow that is actually a reward for completing the level 20 end game base with all other offensive weapons, to be honest with you, being pretty trash. So to get the most impactful weapons, you're going to need to grab the recipes off Solek who is also in the resistance base as a vendor. And I will also highlight each of the weapons that have the most offensive impact in the game, which I think you should consider using going forward. But if you like to play with firearms, you can buy the best weapons from the RDA vendor in the resistance HQ again, using spare parts, which you also earn from outpost loot boxes and unlocking the field labs for fast travel points around the map. Now, this is the best assault rifle and shotgun I've found so far in the game because we, of course, can't craft these weapons ourselves so definitely worth picking up when you've got the spare parts to do so now speaking of which when it comes to crafting each piece of gear and each weapon, what you're looking to achieve here is a plus 200 health score on each item when you craft it, which means it's a substantial item level and that will allow you to reach the max level of 20. So don't make the same mistake I made here early on in the game where I crafted this exquisite armor, but I actually used green or fine resources to do so, which meant that I didn't reach the max level even though I had all of these legendary or exquisite items equipped. And that's because the craft quality was poor. So to avoid having to craft all of this gear twice over, basically, like I did, you're going to need to find exquisite yellow resources for each item before you then do craft it. And a tip for you here, which I also didn't realize until late game, before you do craft this gear, you can actually see the expected strength level increase on the right hand side before you do craft it. So review that just in case it doesn't level you up enough and you end up wasting resources. Now, if you've learned something new or you're enjoying the video so far, please do leave a very swift like down below and please do consider using the Andy Reloads credit code next time you're in the Ubisoft store as it's the best way to support me and you'll also get a big boy 20% off all Ubisoft games if you use my Andy Reloads code with the holiday 20 code starting
starting from the 14th of December. So some solid savings to be had if you're thinking about grabbing a game before Christmas. Now, as we need those exquisite rare resources to craft the best gear and weapons in this game, there's some tips and tricks here which I would suggest you do. Otherwise, it's going to be incredibly time consuming to gather everything you need. Firstly, I would recommend you purchase Raylan's signature pastry at Home Tree in the Kinglaw Forest as it will allow you to only see superior and exquisite gatherables without needing to activate spam your navi senses. And when this runs out, I'd also suggest you mount your Ikran and toggle the one button activation for your navi senses in the settings as this will allow you to cover a lot of ground without the need to hold your button constantly on your keyboard or controller so you can scan for what you need. Additionally, when you do approach a gatherable, make sure you actually inspect it as it will tell you the quality of the item, which means that you don't have to demount, pick that gatherable and everything else that you can see and then sort out all this stuff through your infantry later on. You only need to get off your Ikran to pick this gatherable when you do find a gold or exquisite resource. It's going to save you some time. On top of that, there's a bug in this game at the moment where the mini game isn't showing up. And if this is happening to you, what I would say is slowly hold the R2 button on your controller until it slightly vibrates and then slowly turn your other joystick 360 degrees until the vibration stops. And this is where you'll want to pull fully with your R2 button for a pristine pick every single time. Now to ensure you're getting the best materials for your gear, there's a couple resources that are super rare in this game, which are incredibly difficult to find initially. But don't worry, I of course have you covered. Now the first one is the Thanator Hide, and I've found two different Thanator dens in the Clouded Forest so far. The first one is to the north at this location here on your map, and the second is further to the south, as you can also see here on your map. Now, apart from being a pretty cool boss fight, which are quite challenging to be fair, this is how you're going to loot the Thanator's exquisite hide and teeth for your crafting gear, which will increase your item level dramatically, by the way. And not only will you pick up an achievement, but also on Ubisoft Connect, there is another challenge for crafting an item with a pale crafting ingredient. Now, this pale canyon reed is only found inside Thanator dens and is super, super rare. I actually had to clear several Thanator dens before I managed to pick up my second reed because it will add a 10% damage bonus to your heavy bow if you craft the string with this material, which is a very worthwhile buff to permanently have on this weapon. There's also pale Coronis eggs located in the trees at this location on your map, which are also super rare and can be picked for the full buffs in a hurricane, which randomly occurs in the game, by the way. But if you combine this egg with the Thanator meat for cooking, you'll get an insane 50% damage buff for nearly an hour, which if you then combine with the solid 10% damage mods socketed into your gear, you can reach 100% plus damage by using certain weapons and mods, which is actually ridiculous if you go to clear outposts because you're pretty much one-shotting everyone that you can actually see with this buff on, even on hard difficulty. So definitely worth the time to get all of that sorted. Now, one of the most frustrating aspects of this game for me was spending a lot of time gathering resources in the wild to then have that infantry full warning pop up on my screen. So to combat this, I recommend spending skills in the maker tree to get some extra space, but only after you unlock the clouded forest so you can craft the best gear. But also make sure you utilize the bank vault bag at every main outpost as there's 200 empty spaces there to dump stuff in that you can organize later on in the game. In fact, when you do come back to organize your junk, make sure you don't do what I did and overlook these icons in the middle of the screen because they are filters that sort this bank into item categories. So if you want to withdraw all of your armor and weapons to then sell or contribute to a community basket for clan favor, click on this icon so you can then withdraw it all without having to specifically scroll your whole bank vault, selecting each one in turn and self-filtering, which means a lot of time is also saved in the long run. Now, as this game is a first person game, it plays and feels distinctively different from third person, of course, but this also means that you can push the front facing perspective to the limit in terms of movement. In fact, you you can pretty much run alongside cliffs and force jump your way up to very high points if you time your jumping correctly. And to do this, when you do jump in the air, you want to immediately charge up your next jump and then release that jump button just as you land. And if you time this correctly, you can pretty much skim across the whole terrain in this game, which can be quite fun if you get it right. You can also dodge attacks in this game and not just sit there absorbing strikes, which is another thing that took me a bit too long to realize, if I'm being honest with you, especially against the Thanators. Now to do this, you can strafe to the sides by pressing jump whilst moving to the left or right, which means the enemy locks in on attacking you from the front and then won't divert too much 
when you do perform this maneuver so you can kind of get out of the way. Speaking of which, you can also sit behind a wall, charge your bow shot to then jump out of cover for half a second and release your arrow, which is a cool way to kill everything at range when you're playing conservatively or running low on health pots. Now, hidden away in Home Tree in the King Law Forest, there is a daily quest vendor where you're able to complete weekly and daily challenges that will reward you with satire beads. Now, you can use these beads to spend on unique cosmetics in the game that are found in the Ubisoft Avatar store, which you can use to customize your character. So it is worth picking up these quests if you're gonna be a regular player of this game. But speaking of cosmetics, you can pick up different avatar hairstyles by completing those clan contribution quests that we spoke about earlier when you're kind of dumping your junk that you don't need. And if you're wondering what this icon is on some of the items in your infantry or in your bank, by the way, as the game doesn't really tell you if you hover your cursor over it, this means that this item can be used to contribute something specific specific to the basket for extra rewards, which seems obvious now, but when I was just running around picking up loads of quests or side quests, I honestly just couldn't figure out what this icon meant for several hours. So yeah, it is a community basket quest. So take that item to that specific community basket and you're gonna get a little bit of a extra XP or favor. Now, I've seen a lot of questions and confusion in the comments across the last couple of avatar videos I've whipped up for you. And the first one is regarding investigations in this game, which will be part of quests throughout the whole storyline and to be clear when you are involved in one of these quests you need to link clues to one another so matching them up in pairs is the only way the quest line will progress that means that you have to interact with each clue without the navi senses active and then keep interacting with all of the clues in the vicinity until you match them up as pairs and this is a great tip from fragnar who told me about this in a personal dm and link to his channel below of course but when you're playing in co-op you can solo clear a base until all you need to do is turn off the generators or valves in that outpost but before you do that you can actually invite your friend to a co-op session who can then just loot everything in the loot room without doing any of the work so you can pretty much level up your mate or your friend pretty fast if you're actually pretty into this game now i've got even more tips and tricks for you in this video which should be on your screen right now should be on my face actually so give that a click so you can get even more out of this game and i'll see you there in just a second but if you're still here my huge thanks to sylvia liam and chris at ubisoft and my co-content creator nika who has joined me in early access and helped me make this video coffee is on all of them and i'll see you in that next video hopefully in just a second